Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Listen, I just wanted to, uh, first off, a huge thank you to everyone who uh, tuned in and watched my video last week, delving into my past a little, and to everyone who left me comments and all that. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. So I thought to myself, I want to uh, share a little bit more about my life and my past and who I am. Something Shade Tree Surgeon. If you're not following Shade Tree Surgeon, go check him out. I'll put the links to his channel down below. I watched one of his videos last week, and he said something about YouTube, and he's like, well, I make these videos for me. And I thought, well, self, that's what you need to do. I'm gonna start making these videos for myself. I wanna talk about my riding vest. Now, you know, they, they say always talk about things you're passionate about. The easiest way for me to do that is talk about my jacket. Everything I am passionate about is displayed on this jacket. <laughs> as weird as that sounds, it really is a thing. And trust me, bikers, metalheads, you know, all sorts of groups have always adorned their wear with badges. It's, it's been around for a millennia. Cavemen probably did it, you know, and they miscellane a woolly mammoth, you know, they put a little, you know, put a mammoth fur on there and go, hey, you know, I did that, Og. Yeah, good, good job, man. <laughs> You know, you've always seen riders, bikers, everyone, you know, wearing vests with different patches and badges. There's a million reasons why people wear vests or jackets or whatever you call them. Now, there are different names for them. I'm not going to go into that. They're called cuts, jackets, vests, whatever you want to call them is fine. I just call it a jacket because it used to be a jacket. It was originally a Levi's denim jacket. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a little tour around my jacket. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about the history of some of the badges and the patches that I have on them because some of these patches have been with me for a long, long time. I've had them, some of them for 20 or 30 years or more. I'm a bit of an avid collector, especially anything to do with heavy metal, motorcycles, anything funny. Yeah, I'm all about a sense of humor as well. And anything eight ball related. And I'll go into that a little bit later. Come on over, get a little bit closer, and I'm going to start giving you a tour of my vest, eh? All right, so... <laughs> The vest itself started our life as an old uh, Levi's 504 jacket, I believe. I cut the sleeves off, obviously. I then cut the lapels off because I found when I was riding the lapels would smack against my helmet, especially at anything over 100 uh, kilometers an hour, which didn't happen very often, but it did happen. So <laughs> I cut those things off. As far as uh, the patches go, quick rundown of the patches. We've got a mixture of uh, heavy metal and motorcycle patches and a couple other quirky ones that I like. First one being motorhead patch. Motorhead, legendary band, legendary rockers. Had the pleasure of meeting Lemmy many, many years ago in Los Angeles at a strip club. Yeah, interesting story in that one itself, trust me. And continuing on with the music, I have a Monomar. Uh, one of my favorite bands, Viking Metal. Great music, really like hardcore driving energy music. Oh, gets you going. Seen them live three times. Great band, go check them out. Uh, continuing on with the patches, we have music wise, we have Guar. War, Scumdogs of the Universe. If you don't know who Guar is, you're missing out, man. Go check them out, legendary band. You come from outer space and everything, so well worth checking out Gwar. Uh, what do we got? We got Dio. Dio, another legendary band. Legendary man, Ronnie James Dio, was the lead singer of Black Sabbath, Rainbow. Uh, Dio, obviously, um, influenced and inspired so many people throughout the years, including myself. I had the opportunity of seeing Ronnie James Dio perform with Black Sabbath, or Heaven and Hell. Yeah the best concert I've ever seen in my life. It was incredible. All right, so we got music wise, we got White Zombie. I am a massive White Zombie fan. I actually have a bunch of White Zombie tattoos. White Zombie influenced me heavily throughout my tattooing. I started listening to White Zombie when I started tattooing. Listened to it all the way through my first years and it just really influenced my artwork and my style and just my direction. So yeah, big props to White Zombie. So, continuing on with the patches, but just in a different genre, we have Indian Motorcycle, of course. Indian Motorcycle, yeah, gotta have it. Uh, now this one here, quite a cool one. This is by an artist, Frank Kozik. This is uh, the Bong Bunny. Frank Kozik unfortunately passed away not too long ago. Amazing underground artist, uh, very influential in the skateboard, punk scene, uh, and, and the tattoo world as well. Rest in peace, Frank. 
Now, what else have we got here? We got, oh, this one here, Algea, which is a, a Norse rune. And my family is of Nordic descent. Uh, I was heavily inspired by runes and Norse mythology. I, I love it. Uh, so I handmade this myself. It's made out of leather. I know, I'm a vegan. I made this before I went vegan, obviously, and I've just always kept it there. So I don't see the point in removing it now. Now, I have another one here, which is weed and beer. Do I need to explain that one? No. Um, okay, over here we got some eight balls. <laughs> the eight balls are a reoccurring theme, which I'll get to uh, very shortly. Of course, we have the, uh, the old ZFG. <laughs> I don't need to explain the uh, philosophy behind ZFG, but uh, I'm sure a few of you people are going, what does it mean? It's not a negative connotation. It just means that, you know, I'm an overthinker. I worry about things way too much. I, I am constantly just in a state of, oh, you know. <laughs> so it's been a philosophy of mine to not give a f about what happens. You know, I can't control anything that happens in life. I can't control the outcome. I, you know, no amount of worrying is ever going to change the outcome. So I have to remind myself all the time to not give a f about what happens. Just give about what you can do about it you know and that's why i have zfg tattooed on my hand as well as a reminder and i also have just breathe they kind of go together <laughs> so anyway i'm continuing on with the uh the vest a few more patches on the back we have at uh, the top wasp uh i'm a huge wasp fan I've been listening to Wasp since inside the Electric Circus. I love, them. I love their raw driving sound. They were, the, you know, one of the hardest bands of the 80s. You know, they just didn't give a f And they still don't. Yeah, Wasp are a great band. They produce great music. Black Needle Lawless is an amazing songwriter. Um, he produces epic stories and tales and albums, uh, you know, through his music. So go check them out. I'll put the links in the description below. Wasp Nation official, man. Yeah. So just below that, I have the latest patch that I've just put on there, which is this one here. Megadeth, Mary Jane. Any old school metal fans will know this one. It's, it's one of the hugest hits. Mary Jane is off there, So Far So Good, So What album, which was the first Megadeth album I ever heard. Now, I bought this patch probably around about 2001 off eBay. It was still sealed from Brockham Company, and I kept it. I, I kept it just in the original package, not sure what I was going to do with it. Eventually, I tried to sell it just, you know, because I, I figured it might be worth a couple of dollars, and it really is, you know, but everyone tried to lowball me. Now, I've seen the patches going for between two and 300 euros, just the patches themselves. So after all the lowball offers, I decided, no, you know, it, it needs to be on my jacket, and that's where it is, and that's where it's staying. And just the, the patch below, Indian motorcycles, because, hey, I ride an Indian, and uh, not many people know it's an Indian, especially from behind. You know, it doesn't look like your typical Indian, you know, there's no tassels hanging off it, or, you know, I haven't got big ape hangers or anything. Another thing that my vest does is it lets people know what I'm riding. Yay! So, we're going to get a bit closer here, just because I want to show you uh, uh, some of the badges that I have here. So, let's just tilt you down here. So, up here, we have Warlock. Now, Warlock, very influential metal band from the 80s. Uh, Doro Pesh is a legend, absolutely love her. Doro Metal Queen, just celebrated 40 years of metal. Very good friends, Lemmy and Doro. Everybody loves Lemmy! Uh, over here we have, uh, I can't remember the name of this, but it's um, very Aztec inspired uh, by a friend of mine, Al Chimo, great tattooist. Go check him out. So I have uh, the Virgin Guadalupe, which is Mother Mary. Very common iconography in tattooing, always seen as a good luck symbol. Over this side we have a six-eyed skull which is just filling space really. This one over here, the eight ball, which I'll go into in a little bit. And up here is my Mumu Kwan first arm black belt badge. So I am a first degree black belt in Hapkido. I was trained under Grandmaster Burmas Kim. Uh, under here we have my Indian Motorcycle Riders Group official membership badge. Whoop whoop. Uh, one over here, we've got White Zombie. Again, I'm a huge White Zombie fan. Mr. Meeseeks, missing his legs. He Existence is pegged! Uh, his legs came off during your ride. So, sorry, Mr. Meeseeks. I'm just a huge Rick and Morty fan, so that's why I have him there. 
Uh, and so, you know, as I said, the, the reoccurring theme is the eight balls. Uh, now, the eight balls, just real quickly, it was uh, my first ever logo in tattooing was an eight ball with uh, chrome wings coming out of with flames and stuff. The eight ball kind of just stuck as my logo for tattooing for many years. As a consequence, I have many eight balls tattooed over me. Collected uh, everything from eight ball keychains to lighters to you name it. I even have a glow in the dark eight ball patch, which I'm debating putting on the jacket you know one day uh, don't do a lot of night riding so I don't really see the point at the moment so that's a quick rundown of the patches and badges on my jacket I do have a massive collection at home of patches and badges and it's just deciding what you want just to put on I have to take into account that I also you know ride a bike at 100 kilometers an hour so I have to put on stuff that is going to stay on the jacket I have lost a couple of badges already so there you go there's a little tour of my riding jacket. Hope you all enjoyed that one. And hey, do you wear a riding jacket? What do you wear? Feel free to leave a comment below. Tell me all about your jacket or your vest. And thanks for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I am going to be doing a lot more like this in the future. I want to share a little bit more about my life and my passions and uh, my past and just all the good stuff. You know, the title of my channel is Mr. Brad Raven. Uh, so it is about me and my life. Whether you find me interesting or not, ah, that's okay, you know, but at least you have an insight into who I am and uh, my vest. And hey, if you do like what you see, please feel free to stick around. Um, there's a little button down below that says subscribe. Click on that and you'll be seeing new videos from me every week. Every Sunday night at 7 p.m. actually. New Zealand time that is, because I don't know if you know, but I am in New Zealand. It's such a beautiful place. Like, here, come and check this out. So yeah, I am currently in at a little area called Brooklands, which is just outside of Christchurch in Canterbury. Absolutely beautiful little place and a uh, nice quiet little spot to stop and film. Yeah.